What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about another function of extrude tools, TIG's extrusion extension for SketchUp. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. I will note that registration for that course is closing this Wednesday. So if that's something that you want to check out, make sure you get in there before the registration closes. If you're looking for more information, you can check that out at thesketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about this uh, other function of extrusion tools called extrude edges by rails by face. And this is a very powerful tool that you can use. And before we get started on that, um, you may have noticed that I skipped from the extrude edges by lathe over to the extrude edges by rails by face. Um, that's because these extrude edges by faces, I've never been able to get them to work the way that they're supposed to work. So they're supposed to be able to take a shape and then extrude it along a path or along multiple paths. For some reason, it only works for uh, extruding along a continuous path for me. So at least for right now, I'm not going to make a video on these two tools. Um, if you really want them, leave a comment below and let me know and I can try to put something together. Um, but this is probably one of my favorite tools inside of extrude tools. So what it is, is it's very similar to your extrude edges by rails where um, you could draw like a shape like this one and then another shape and it would create a face. But in this case, this is actually going to do that by extruding a shape along the paths instead of creating the face. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is probably one of the simpler shapes that you can create in this. If you remember previously, if you were to run extrude edges by rails, you would select a profile, a second profile, or um, a curve, and then a melding profile, and you could use this to create a face. And so if you look at this, if we look at the way that this creates this, you can see how basically what it does is it just takes the edges that are in here. So in this case, it's taking this segment and it's extruding each one of these along the path that's created by this edge right here. So this is how it creates the edge in the first tool. Well, with this tool, what this is going to do instead is it's going to take a shape, like in this case, I've created kind of a pipe shape, and it's going to extrude that along the edges that are created instead of creating faces. And so I'll just show you the way that it works. And so what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to select the profile that we want to extrude along here. So in this case, just my pipe shape. Then we're going to activate the extrude edges by rails by face. We're going to click on this. It's going to ask us for select the profile curve, just like with the first tool. So if I click on that, this is going to be our profile. It's going to ask for our first rail curve, which in this case is this one. If we had a second rail, like another curve over here, we would click on that. In this case, I'm just going to click on the second rail again. And then it's going to ask for the melding profile. And if you remember, that's going to be your last curve over here. So if this was going from one curve to another curve, that would be over here. Since it's not, we're just going to click on this right here. So when I click on that, it's going to ask me if I want to create a rib based on the profiles, the rails, or the profiles and rails. In this case, we want this to be the profiles and rails. So you could set this to just create this along the curves that run this way if you wanted to, or you could set it to run just along the curves that run this way. But in this case, we want it to be for both, and we're going to go ahead and click OK. What that's going to do is that's going to go through and that's going to extrude this along all of those different edges. So you can see how that allows us to create kind of an interesting um, lattice type shape. And so, so far, this isn't super interesting, just, just in the sense that uh, you could do something like this with something like pipe along path or something like that. But where this gets a little bit more interesting is, first of all, let's say we were to run this again and do the same thing. And I'm going to create a different melding profile. So I'm just going to make a copy over here. And we'll go ahead and scale that down shorter. So that way you can see what this would do with a melding profile. So we're going to do the same thing. Just select this pipe, run the tool, and then this is going to be our profile. This is going to be our first rail. This will be our second rail. And this will be our melding profile. And then we're going to click OK. So this is going to do the same thing. You can see how it's creating the edges the same way it would if you were to use the first tool in here. But again, it's using this and extruding the shape that you select along here. So you can see how, again, this allows us to create a shape that kind of tapers down kind of like this. And so let's say, for example, that we didn't want to do this with a pipe shape. Let's say we want to do this with like a steel I-beam shape. So what I'm going to do. Instead of having a pipe shape, is I'm going to select this I-beam 
right here. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller just for the sake of this exercise. But let's say we had this beam. We run the tool this way with our two profiles. Then we click OK. You can see how this is gonna go through and this is going to extrude that beam along each one of these edges. So you can see how you can use this to create different kinds of profiles along these faces as well. So you can see how this I-beam shape um, suddenly gets a lot more interesting than just doing this with a bunch of circles. So you can see how I could use this to create like a steel structure or something like that. Now you would have to be a little bit careful. You can see how this doesn't extrude this all the way down to where it's flat, which I wish that it would. Um, but you can still do some really interesting things. So let's say for example that I just wanted to do this more along some kind of like a rectangular shape, so something like this. Well if we tried to do that right now, this wouldn't work because we would select this and it would ask us for our curve. Well, none of these edges are curves. These are all straight lines. This just looks at all of these as individual edges. So like, for example, I wouldn't be able to extrude something like this, uh, this uh, three-sided shape along these edges because none of these are really considered curves. But if you take all of the edges and you use the extension weld, if you remember what weld does is weld takes all of these and it welds them together into a continuous shape. And so in this case, this actually considers this a curve now, like a three-sided curve. So we could use that for our profile, but this still wouldn't work because we could select our profile curve, but you can see how our rails have to be curves as well. And so this isn't gonna allow us to do that. However, if we were to take this and we were to divide this using the divide tool, so right click and click divide, and let's say I was to divide this into 10 segments, you can see how right now these are individual edges. But if I select them and then use the weld tool in order to weld this together, and we'll just copy this over here, you can see how since I welded this together, this actually considers this a curve because it's made up of multiple segments even though it's straight. So what you can do is you can select this and then you could run this just like you would normally. So this will be considered a rail, this will be considered a rail, and then we can use this as our melding profile. I'm going to go ahead and say rib from both. We're going to click OK. You can see how you're actually able to um, extrude this shape out whenever we do this. And so one thing to note about this is the direction that this is facing is gonna matter. So like for example, if I was to turn this and then run this again, the orientation of that shape is gonna affect the way that this is created. So for example, if I click and run this, you can see how if I turn this sideways, these channels are extruded sideways laying down instead of standing up. So you can use this to kind of affect the way that those extrusions happen. Because um, otherwise you don't get a whole lot of control over the way that the extrusions happen with this tool. And so another example would be here. If we were to take this shape and create a completely flat series of curves, this would still work. So I could take this and I could run this tool and I could set this as my profile, these two as my rails, and then this is my melding profile and click OK. Well, what this would do is this would extrude this along all of these different edges, um, just like as if we were uh, to do this with a standing up curve that runs forward. However, if you notice, this isn't exactly accurate because these these I beams aren't standing up; they're laying down. We don't want them to we don't want them to lay down. However, because of the way this extension works, if you try to run this and stand the object up, it's going to give us an error message. So if I come in here and I stand this up to 90 degrees and I try to do this, it's going to tell me that this face needs to be flat, meaning it needs to be laying down. So instead of setting this shape so that it's standing up, what I did instead is I came in here and I stood this shape up right here. So you can see how I stood this up. So instead of it laying down, it's standing up. That's going to affect the orientation of the extrusion that it creates. So if I come in here and I use this now, and I run this, you can see how this is creating the face in the same way, but it's uh, extruding all of these I-beams standing up. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'll try to explain it a little bit better. 
And one thing to be aware of with this is it does create a lot of edges and faces and none of these are grouped. Um, what I'm going to do in this case is for some reason there's one of these that it creates and I'm going to go ahead and put it in a group and then I'm going to rotate it. For whatever reason it creates one of these um, turned sideways. So all of the others are standing up the way that they're supposed to, but this one, for whatever reason, gets created kind of standing up the wrong way. So you can see how when you play around with the orientation of these shapes and uh, the way that they're standing up, you can adjust the way that your extrusion is created. And then you could take this whole thing and you could probably you could make a group out of it and then you could lay it back down. So if you needed the if you needed this to be a laid down shape, you can see how you can go through and you can create this uh, standing up and then lay it down. And then same trick over here, where if you take these edges, in this case I've divided it into five and then weld them together, you can use this to create your profiles with flat edges as well. So you can see how again, if you get good at dividing your edges and then weld them into faces, you get a lot more control over the shapes that you can create inside of SketchUp. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you know this uh, was contained in this extension? Have you used it at all? I just love having the SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.